name of the mural, I think, is uh, Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus, but I don't know if that's the official name or anything. The official name of the mural is The Word of Life. Thinking of this as a touchdown, Jesus was just not in my mind, or anybody else's for that matter. And it's become a kind of nice, friendly, familiar name for this beautiful piece of art. The Word of Life mural on the Hesburgh Library is one of the most significant monuments on the Notre Dame campus. We knew that if we didn't do something with this building, then the enormity of it, and the size, and the could be mistaken for a grain elevator or something, especially out here. It's a very large uh, work of art. It, it measures 134 feet high by 68 feet wide. Miller Sheets, who was the author of this particular mosaic, was one of the most wonderfully balanced, enlightened artists that I've ever met. He was a painter, he was a sculptor, he was even an architect. So he was a really fascinating sort of Renaissance man in many ways. The theme of the mural, Christ the Teacher, was based upon a biblical passage, uh, 1 John, the first chapter of John. And when Miller Sheets began his uh, project, he sketched out a figure of Christ, then drew in a cross behind Christ, and then started drawing all of the, the prophets, the, the great figures in the history of uh, Christianity. And he, he uh, laid them out in kind of an ascending order, so that he started with the classical scholars, the Old Testament prophets, and moved upward on the mural to the Byzantine, the medieval, the Renaissance scholars. Christ is a very large figure that looms over all of them. It's like a kaleidoscope of personalities that make up the history of Christianity and pre-Christianity as well. It's very rich philosophically and theologically. Millard Sheets was very important for combining Impressionism with Cubism. And so you have the, the figures represented, but then there are these great lines that, that go across, that are, are inscribed across the mural. And that's a, a cubist uh, stylistic feature that, that he took from artists like Picasso and Matisse, for instance. I'd say it's made of asbestos. Like some kind of special wood or bricks or something. Like that. Rocks. Stucco. I know the mural is made of granite. The mural is made up of granite from all over the world. It has some 5,700 individual pieces of granite. Granite, of course, is one of the hardest stones there is. The climate here is abominable at times, and no one could say that would last. Millard Sheets was able to get something like 140 or more different colors uh, by using different kinds of granite. And he had to go to something like 16 foreign countries and 11 different states in the United States to find all of the different colors and all the different types of granite. He told me once that you can't cut granite on the curve. At least that, that was the, the myth. He got these young, bright workers and said, I know I want these things cut on the curve and just as I've drawn them. And these guys didn't know you couldn't cut on the curve, so they did. I'd say the face of Christ is about 30 feet. 10 feet? 15 meters. The face of Christ is nine feet tall. The head of Christ is made up of 115 different pieces of stone. That's one of the largest panels, and that's the most complex of all of them. He did the whole thing, first of all, in one single picture, if you will. A large scale sketch of the final work is called a cartoon, and it's done at, a full, at full scale so that the pieces could actually be organized according to that cartoon. I don't know where he got the piece of paper that big, but he did. They had to spread them out on a big basketball floor just so he could see it. When they assembled the work on the floor, they put these stainless steel dowels and they coated all of it with plastic before covering it with cement. And when it was then installed on the building, there's actually a space between the structural elements of the building and the mural itself so that the whole thing can expand and contract and move very slightly uh, during the changing seasons. The amazing thing is that it has lasted this long and it's kept the richness of its color. The library was dedicated on May 7, 1964. Hesburgh Library is very appropriate uh, to the 1960s. It was a time when skyscrapers were very popular in the United States. 
and it was thought to be a, an important thing to do here at Notre Dame to have a great high-rise building to sort of represent the times and the prosperity of the time. It was going to be one of the three focal points in the university. When you drive up here, you see the spire of the church, you see the dome over the main building, and then you see the skyline and the mosaic from here. And that makes a, a wonderful kind of trilogy to locate the university in its right position. Notre Dame has been called the place where the church does its thinking. And uh, this mural, uh, probably more than any other image on the campus, uh, is a great symbol uh, for that idea, uh, the great academic tradition of Notre Dame.